Thank you so much for being here with us today. So, just a little bit of an intro. Uh, WordCamp Europe is a big event that brings together people from all over the world. Underrepresentation and discrimination in tech have been an issue for a long time. And the WordPress community has always tried to bridge these gaps with different initiatives. Having a group of women and non-binary folks on stage in Athens is one of the many ways we have as a community to showcase our diversity. So please give it up for Anne McCarthy, Product Wrangler at Automatic. <laughs> A big woo-hoo for Chaya Osterbrook, so CEO of Yoast and entrepreneur. Massive round of applause for Jessica Lischik, front-end developer at Extendify. Cheers, lots of cheers for Rianne Rietfeld, web ac accessibility expert for Level Level and a trainer at Ali Collective. <laughs> and finally, I want to see the pom-poms in the air for Thelma Hutete, happiness engineer at Automatic. So pom-poms. <laughs> Yes? <laughs> Chaya asked me to do the introductions. She, yes. says, she says that I do great introductions. I'm available for birthday, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> and anything else. And give a sh huge shout out to Francesca for ah, hosting the panel. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> I thought the dance was enough to introduce myself <laughs> to Jessica. Uh, so we prepared a few questions and we have talked in the last week. Um, so we'll start with one topic that we all felt was quite important for our career uh, about mentorship. So I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of mentoring people, coaching them and sponsoring them. So mentorship is one of the first actions you can do for underrepresented people in every group. And they prove to be quite ef effective for uh, professional growth. So have you had any mentors in your career? And uh, what role did they play? And uh, have you been a mentor to others? Who wants to go first? Yes? Um, I had a mentor um, when I was um, an analyst. I, I studied chemistry, so uh, in the laboratory. And what I learned from him is um, there are no stupid questions. And you have to keep asking until you actually know what you want to know. So if you're afraid to speak out because you don't understand anything, please say, okay, I don't understand it. Tell me it and keep asking. And, and that was very useful in my career. Yeah. Um, I'm mentoring now um, Caitlin. I don't know if she's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Caitlin is the new uh, accessibility expert at Level Level, and she's very bright. <laughs> yeah. Then we shall invite her for our next panel. <laughs> <laughs> who else, who else want to say something about mentorship? Yes, I had a mentor and at the start of my career and his advice was become a mentor and I thought that was the best advice he could give me because then I could look at it from a different perspective. So, and hopefully I'm a mentor to many of, of course, the Yoast people or Newfield people and I think that at this, no, no, it's not a table, right? But in this half round, I think we are all mentors to each other, right? Yes. Yes, we were. <laughs> um, my introduction to the WordPress community and to the WordPress space was through mentorship and sponsorship. Um, and I think a key part of it for me was the right amount of stress. So there's like a concept of like use stress, which is good stress. 
And so I'd learn something in WordPress and then he'd teach me something else. And it kind of just progressed from there. Um, and now I, I feel like a lot of my mentorship is at a different scale. I've done one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one mentorship, but now it's about creating pathways for people to feel comfortable in reporting GitHub issues or trying something new out um, and giving feedback on, on what's being worked on in WordPress core. Yeah, yeah. Jessica, Thelma, something to add. <laughs> uh, from my experience, when I started working with WordPress, I, the people that helped me, I don't think they would even consider themselves as mentors. Um, but when I look back, I see all the things that they did and how they helped me get into the space and get comfortable and start working on things, which eventually led to a number of things. So that's, that was like my experience. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can actually share this experience. Like, I never had a mentor that I defined as a mentor. Instead, I had many people, like, helping me out in some way and kind of mentoring me, but I never had someone I called a mentor. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's as a follow-up question. Would you be ready to be, like, officially a mentor for someone? Like, being, you know, like, I'm, I'm going to be your mentor and reach out to people and say, hey, I can help you. Do you feel you're at a point in your career where you... I've never tried it, actually, to like mm -hmm. be a mentor, to have that, that uh, mindset, but I think we'll give it a try. Yeah, yeah, that never hurts to try. <laughs> I do want to call out a mentorship program that's being worked on by Hari, who I don't know if he's here, but um, that's something that I was thinking about with that question, is that there's actually a program um, being yeah. started to help provide mentorship more formally in the WordPress project. So it, could yeah. be, it would be amazing, I think, if you're looking at a panel of mentors, um, for me at least, earlier in my career, to see someone like me as a part of the initial group of that. So I encourage all of us to maybe <laughs> be a part of that effort. Yes, yes, please. Um, shall I move on to the next question? Do we want to add something to this topic? No? Let's go next. So, ah, <laughs> being part of an underrepresented group, have you struggled in your job or the WordPress community? Someone wants to go first? <laughs> yeah? yeah? Someone else should go first. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, would, I mean, to be candid, um, I think I'm perceived a certain way between my age, um, perceived gender, and just, yeah, needing to be friendly at all times, needing to be approachable at all times, needing to read paragraphs and paragraphs of text, and it's, um, yes, that is part of my job, but it is interesting whenever I'm talking to other coworkers, um, how they don't get those <laughs> um, interactions, um, and yeah, there are times whenever I think um, it's been difficult to navigate and emojis don't cover up everything. <laughs> so, yeah, I've definitely have had some moments where I've had to, you know, say, like, this is where the project's headed, this is what we're doing, and then I've noticed the reaction is a bit different. Um, and it's something I'm mindful of. Like, there are times whenever I'll ask um, a male colleague to share a message rather than myself, because yeah. um, I know it'll be perceived differently. Mm. And we were talking also about the age, and I know that yeah. We'll have more to say about the topic. But you, when we were preparing for this, you really brought up the age uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever I got started in the WordPress project, I was very young. I was 21 when I joined Automatic, and my first WordCamp um, got bossed around a little bit, um, which was in 2014, and a lot has changed since then. I didn't really mm -hmm. know how to advocate for myself. So I definitely have experienced that. And I know we were talking about Rian. I don't know if you want to share something. Yeah, yeah. I, I never was like felt left out uh, as a woman, but I feel left out as someone who is not uh, young anymore. Um, I'm a baby boomer. So within the WordPress community, I'm very, very old. Uh, I entered the WordPress community in my 50s. So I already was a bit older, but if you have like an experience in web development in like 20 years, you've seen everything. And then new developers come up with, oh, I have this new idea, and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, and then convincing them that I've oh, been there, done that, got a t-shirt, it doesn't work. And that, that's quite a, sometimes uh, I think that is friction between young, eager, eager people who really want to uh, learn and address stuff, and then seeing 
yeah, this is not going anywhere. So uh, the, that's a bit what, what I'm struggling with, that when you're older, um, you're not taken seriously at that point. Mm. And uh, I don't know the solution for that, but I think maybe it's just fact of life. I don't know. Well, shout out to our blog, uh, Grumpy Old Women Codes. Yes. <laughs> Rihanna and I have a blog, Grumpy Old, we we have uh, a blog, Grumpy Grumpy old, old Woman women. Yeah. Codes. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we can be grumpy together, yes, very yes. grumpy. <laughs> and it's just me and Ryan reading it, basically, but when we have to vent about something, yeah. uh, we go there. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, I think I had, um, I, I worked in several um, industries, and if I compare the WordPress ecosystem with, for example, uh, corporate companies and um, now, for example, is that I work at a huge um, insurance company, um, really corporate orientated, of course, and there I had to struggle a bit more, of course. Mm -hmm. I belong to the minorities of the minorities. Um, so that was, in that time, that was really difficult. But when I entered the, e the WordPress ecosystem, that was a warm belt. I really want to point it out because I felt that it was really inclusive. Everyone was basically adopting my background, mm -hmm. and there was not an issue. So there's also a positive story to share here. Yeah. There is. Tell me. <laughs> uh, my experience, I was introduced to community just after school, so the first industry that I experienced was WordPress related. I didn't know much about that, but I had, I experienced a lot of imposter syndrome when I started out. So as someone who is from a very small country in Zimbabwe, the community there is not that big and WordPress was more European and West and American centralized. So you're going to this big world and the culture is different, but people are welcoming, you know. So it, it did at the end I did manage to go around this because of the people, some of the people that I met after a couple of times. But at first it was very difficult to put myself out there and say I want to do that because I didn't know how that would be perceived, you know? Yeah. That was the biggest struggle that I had. Yeah, that happens. Jessica, do you want to add something? Did you have any struggle? Of course, dude, I have struggles. So it's, yeah, I think it's, um, I would be surprised if there would be anyone with like zero struggles at all. Mm who is not male. Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> Someone had to say it. Thank you for saying it. <laughs> uh, this also reminds me that I said that I would do a round robbing asking you your pronouns and where you're from. And I totally forgot about it because I was very, very concentrated on the choreography. Do we want to take a moment <laughs> to ask everyone for their pronouns and where they're from? Because maybe, okay, sorry, let's go. <laughs> uh, Seattle, Washington right now in the US. Um, and she, they. The Netherlands, Nijmegen, she, her. Germany, she, her. The Netherlands, um, I'm a female baby boomer. <laughs> Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm from Zimbabwe, and she, her, she, her. She, her. Um, Italy, she, her. Okay. And Francesca, yes. Uh, Torino, Italy, but also Norwich, England. Um, I wanted to stay a bit more on the struggles, but I also didn't want to, to sound like, oh, poor us. We just, you know. It has been so hard and we didn't achieve anything because that's not true. Despite all these difficulties and many more that we probably haven't mentioned here, uh, we also had some pretty impressive achievements. So who wants to go down first? Ah, now it's the alphabetical. Yeah, we've and, been debating this. We were supposed to answer every question alphabetically, and I was like, well, let's not. Yeah, but this one <laughs> is on you. Um, yeah, I was thinking about this. Um, I think for me, it's recent, but the outreach program, the full sighting outreach program, 
I'm really proud of. I know it's been imperfect, and um, so yeah. And I think a lot of it is like a testament to people taking a risk and being willing to engage in an experiment and a first for the community. And I know it wasn't always met. Like I started it privately at first and people were like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, that was bad. Okay, let me undo this. <laughs> um, so I feel like I've learned along the way and I hope, I hope it creates other outreach program efforts in the future. Yes. Yes, I was thinking what am I going to highlight here, but I'm going to, of course, going to highlight <laughs> the Pride event that we are hosting tonight. Are you going to be there? <laughs> and I think it started out small a couple of years ago, and it was, I believe, done by Codable. We partnered up, and now we have this amazing waiting list. So if you aren't there tonight, that's sad for you, but be there next year. <laughs> yes. Um, I would say one what two of my biggest achievements so far have been being part of the 5.6 release as a default <laughs> theme wrangler. <laughs> um, and also being the lead organizer for WordCamp Osnabrück in 2019, which was a 250 person WordCamp happening in Germany. And I'm going to repeat both of these achievements again this year. Oh, wow. Woo. You hear it here first. <laughs> um, uh, my achievement is, I think, uh, together with the accessibility team, we got accessibility on the map in WordPress. Yes. And and my, my 15 minutes of fame when I uh, quit the accessibility team because I didn't agree with the way it was going. So I'm famous for quitting my job. <laughs> um, uh, this is kind of a difficult one, but I think if I look at the things that I've done, I would say my biggest achievement was being part of the woman-led release, 5.6. Yeah. Are you going to be part also of 6.4? I haven't dragged you into it. <laughs> you can come willingly, you know. We're a friendly bunch. Um, this is, uh, so this question about the achievement, and we were discussing this just before we came on stage, and it's a hard one. I don't know why um, underrepresented group of, groups of people have such a hard time uh, boosting their achievements. And I see this over and over, and I've seen this over and over in my life, and I'm exactly like that, you know, I'm like, Mm. Mm. And then it's like, no, you led the three releases of WordPress. Like, yeah, but you know, it's a group of people. It's a whale old machine. We do it as a group. You know, it's like, oh, you're a director at your company. Yes, but we're four directors. It's not just me. So, you know, I see this happening quite a lot in underrepresented groups. I don't know if you have this feeling also with your friends, you know, colleagues, if you see... There is this famous article by HBR, uh, uh, see, our Harvard Business Review, which is at this point like 20 years old, that says that uh, women and in general uh, minorities apply for a job only if they tick 100% of the, of the check boxes. And white men will be like, do I fit two of them? Sure, I'm going to send my CV. So, you know, and then that's how you don't get... Uh, a lot of women in uh, executive roles because we don't apply for them unless we feel that we are the most, the best, most qualified person to, to apply for that job. So, uh, you know, if anyone in the audience also is downplaying their successes, find yourself a cheerleader that, you know, when you're like, oh, no, I didn't do anything, they will tell you, no, but you did that. And do you remember that time you did that? And do you remember that time you did that? And then you say, oh, yes, I did. And that's, that's healthy. It's not, you know, it's not being 
showing off, is really claiming what it's yours already. So that's important. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on to another topic, where is our timekeeper? What, how much time do we have? We're good? Okay. <laughs> no, because we prepared for this <laughs> panel and we're like, it's going to take us four hours to talk about everything we want to talk about. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I want to make sure that we have the time to go over everything. So, uh, this is a very um, hot topic, I would say, in terms of that it's very current. We know that representation on stage is essential to showcase diverse voices. Do you think that underrepresented groups of people like women, non-binary folks and minorities are reluctant to speak at events? I'll say personally, um, I would not be on the stage or would speak at a WordCamp um, if it wasn't for COVID, weirdly, because it actually made me way more comfortable to be able to record a talk and mm -hmm. give it. Um, so I gave like a keynote talk at what a word camp and I would never do that otherwise um, and I think having a lot of that is because of I think just the perception and the fear and what questions am I going to get asked and just all that because I'm a lot of times I was talking about the site editor very early on um, and it's hard to share nuance in 10 seconds um, and honestly having the recorded format and getting some practice um, underneath me I think has allowed me to feel comfortable even doing this which is something I feel like I should be able to talk about um, without fear, right? <laughs> um, so it is like a, I, I do think that is still in people's heads, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I also think it relates to what you said. Women want to be perfect and then perform. Um, and um, you don't have to. You just, uh, you have to say, okay, I'm the expert here. I'm going to tell you. And um, you don't have to see the audience as hostile. Yes. Uh, the audience wants you to do well, and this sounds very zen-like, but feel the warmth of the, su of, the, of the audience, because the audience wants you to do well and wants you to listen to you. So um, don't be afraid if your talk isn't perfect. My English isn't perfect, and sometimes I mess up talks, and people still uh, get the message. So don't strive for perfect, just do it and practice it. And you will very, very nervous at, at the beginning. Uh, and I'm still very nervous. But when you start and you prepare very well, it will just go right. So um, try it. And don't uh, uh, want to be perfect and then try it and get passionate about a message you want to get through and focus mm -hmm. on the message you want to tell, you want to learn your audience something. And they come to listen to you because they want to learn. So I think uh, really you do yourself short if you, what you know, if you keep that for yourself, mm -hmm. you share what you know, and that will get you further in life. Yeah. <laughs> so I have this amazing team around me and also, I sometimes struggle. Should I apply for something? Should I be on stage? But my awesome team pointed out that, and I think that's a really awesome advice, like do it with anxiety. Just do it, try that. Yeah. Yeah. And then let's see what happens. And then it is... You live. You live. Yeah, you survive probably. <laughs> I will say there's a cost. Like my mental health, I literally yeah. will not sleep the night before. Like, I'm not, it's not, um, even when I record the presentation, having to watch myself, I thought my heart was just going to jump out. So I think there is a cost to it. And I think, you know, we can all be supportive audiences. And yeah. I agree with you. Like, I, I wish I could get that out of my head. Um, but yeah, there's a very real, like, my anxiety will stay for days. Um, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe if I can add a personal story to this. So I, when I had my first talk at a WordCamp, I did not do... Uh, my topic was introversion, so it was not a technical talk because I was too afraid of giving a technical talk, of being like getting like questions I could not answer for some for whatever reason or so. So I gave myself uh, the permission to give a talk where I could uh, a talk about a topic where I could feel confident of, where I had personal experience and as you just said, where I had a message. 
because it was helpful for me to understand myself after I learned that I'm an introvert. So, and this is how it got me started and like going past that anxiety to actually share my message and then from there slowly get into the more advanced talks. Yeah, yeah. Thelma? I, I think what I would say would just echo what everyone has said here. And maybe I'll share a bit of my experience, why myself, I don't try to speak at events. Yes. I have the worst stage fright in the world. It's, I, I never used to do any presentation in school. I'll be like, I'll do everything else as long as you go in front, because I don't want to be part of that. And also, organizing web camps and volunteering, I can do that, but I can't be a speaker. It's not something that I can do. So that's why I wouldn't want to give a talk, but I think sometimes, there are people that are the biggest cheerleaders, and if we manage to have that in our community, people will be more comfortable to be doing that, even if they're going to butcher it, they'll be like, oh well, well, people won't say anything bad or anything like that, because they want me to learn. So in, if we have a space where people feel comfortable to yes. learn and grow while they're doing everything, then maybe that could help. Now, you don't have to start at WordCamp Europe. <laughs> well, but also, <laughs> yeah, you can start at your local meetup <laughs> or for your colleagues. Like, uh, and, and then start small and then practice and practice and then you end up on the stage on WordCamp Europe. I also <laughs> want to say that you said yes without hesitation to this panel. So, you know. Thank <laughs> you. You said yes without hesitation to this panel, so you know. Um, Sorry, I was so excited <laughs> to. I saw the the heading and what we'll be talking about. Like yeah, 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 yeah. But then I forgot that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> See, you have a message, so go for the message, not for your anxiety. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, it's a great story, Thelma, because you really said yes without hesitation. And I was like, I have stage fright. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you realize we're going to do this on a stage. <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm really thankful that you decided to, you know, overcome you. this. And I know that it's very expensive for your mental health. And this is also something that... Uh, so, I feel the need to volunteer for everything and say yes to everything because I'm like, I'm a woman, I'm a bit older, I was technical, I'm not so technical anymore, I'm an executive, so it's like, I feel this urge and responsibility to be on stage for younger generation on one hand or for older women that feel that, you know, it's late for them to start something in there. I have a talk for work camp, for work camps that I never, it never gets picked, but it's like starting something new in your fifties. <laughs> At one point I'll manage to give this talk. <laughs> um, but, but there is a cost attached to it. Like, you know, I came on stage dancing and being a fool. My heart was pounding because it doesn't matter if I get on a stage with 10 people in front of me or a thousand people, there is that moment before you go on stage, it's like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I do also wanna just call out, um, I joined the project much after, I think a lot of the people on this stage and just say thank you for paving the way and also I am younger than you and I, I really appreciate that you are paving the way for older people um, in WordPress, because I will one day hopefully be that. So thank you. Yeah. And um, may, may I uh, say, what we are saying doesn't apply to women alone. Yes. I think a lot of men have the same issues, like I'm afraid to go, I'm, I'm afraid to talk. So this is like a human thing, I yes. think. Yes, I think, yes. Yes, please. There was an applause starting. <laughs> I think, and that's basically the reason why uh, we're here, is that um, it's still this old HBR um, article that actually kind of set the tone for a lot of things. If um, 
a man has a stage fright and then he applies for an event, he has more chances to be picked than us. So the problem, the initial problem issue might be the same, but you know, I think that women and minorities and in general underrepresented groups of people don't always get to overcome that fear because they don't always get called on stage. So that's, that's, a, that's a big issue, I think. Um, so we are at time. I'll take another five minutes just to finish. Um, do we have any questions? There are some questions. Just to gauge the, the, the audience, because if you don't have any questions, well, okay, okay, there are a few questions, okay. Um, so how can we encourage and achieve more diversity on stage? Chaya, do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I was well, like, I saw you reaching for yes, the mic, so I, I was assumed. Doing, is she's going to start. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, because right. we're going to go um, alphabetically. <laughs> yeah, I think that I've been thinking a long time about this question. So, of course, I, of, no, I, I don't know if it's of course. I got asked a lot of times to be on a stage, and we covered this topic already. But what is actually the purpose of being on stage from a minority group? Like, are we just now being role models? Is that what is expected of us? I'm just wondering about that. I, that's, a, that's a question. Then. Yeah. I remember uh, there's a conference called Lesbians Who Tech, and one of the speakers said, we'll know when we've achieved uh, success when you can have like a mediocre lesbian in leadership. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think about that a lot because I think there is like, that's I think part of the pressure I feel is I'm like, oh, I gotta be perfect because I want other people to see that like we can do this. Um, but yeah, rather than just thinking about speaking in general, I think in terms of other pathways, one of the things I really appreciate is across the, the project, people doing the same kind of work in different ways and mm -hmm. the more we can elevate that. Um, so maybe you're really good at reviewing documentation, like let's elevate that. Um, maybe yes. you're not just writing it, maybe you're reviewing it and you're excellent at spotting sorts of stuff. I need someone who does that for me. <laughs> I can bust out a lot of content but need a reviewer. And I think um, everyone on stage has done it in their own way. Yeah. And I think it's a, the more ways we can have people be successful, the more resilient the project is. Um, the longer it'll last in the future, the more people we can have contributing, um, the more we can get the next generation and the generation above involved. Um, yeah. My mom has macular degeneration, which is like partly losing your central vision. And so I think a lot about accessibility from that standpoint. And I yeah. would love to have her doing testing with that. Um, we're all gonna be there at some point. We're all temporarily abled. And so I think there's a lot of interesting things there in terms of thinking about the resilience of an op open source project where we just need more and more people from different backgrounds to be successful. Definitely. Jessica, I think you had something to, you wanted to say something about how to encourage and have more women, more diversity in general on stage? Yeah, now you called me, you should. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I have notes. That's why, I, quick, that's why I asked you, because you told me that you had yeah. notes about it. I was it. just following, so concentrated, like your discussion. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my memory just <laughs> faded away. Here we are. Um, yeah, uh, so maybe, um, so there are initiatives out there who yes. encourage uh, women and uh, non-binaries to like get on stage and do that. And um, I think they're quite successful. I yes. think there's a lot of things going on there, but maybe we also need a discussion about like the ugly things, oh, the yes. things of me forgetting what I wanted to say. <laughs> The things of me not breathing enough and just talking, 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 talking. and then not really being able to talk because I cannot get air. Yeah. Like these things, it happened to me. Yes. So, and it's not very, it does not look very professional. And I think many people may be um, paralyzed by these things mm. that they cannot, that they fear this would happen to them and not do it because like they're scared of like what yeah. could potentially happen yeah and maybe we need some more discussions of this because yeah. i've never heard anyone talking about this stuff 
Yeah, that's true. I, um, I think that in the diverse speaker program, uh, that the WordPress.org, if you go to WordPress.org, um, I want to say learn or training or, well, you'll find it. Google is your friend. There's a diverse speaker program, and there is actually a section that addresses a little bit also the, you know, the on-stage presence, which is very difficult to achieve. Um, and yeah, that's, that's something that I think it's in a lot of uh, people's mind. And again, we go back to the fact that underrepresented people feel that we always have to be perfect before we do something. And <laughs> I think it was, uh, John, do you, did you tell, I think one time you told me, you went, sorry to put you on the spot, but you told me that there was this, uh, you went to a PHP conference when there was this great developer that basically spent 20 minutes introducing himself. And this was like a PHP guru that, you know, people came from all over the world to listen to him and learn stuff. And the guy just spent 20 minutes randomly. So, and, but the thing is that he gets away with it because he's a white man PHP guru. And when women do that, we don't get away as easily with that. That's the sad reality. Can I quickly add to that another way that I think we could help is to have folks who are from more represented backgrounds to give up their seats. Oh, yes. And to pay attention to that stuff. It shouldn't yes. just be on us. Because it, it really is not fun to be that person or to get the last minute ask. Yes. When I'm like, you should have asked, you can ask. Yes. And uh, then I'm going to point uh, the attention to my friend Aaron Jorbing here <laughs> on the first row that at some point you said, I'm not going to MC um, events anymore because I always get asked. And I think it's time people that look different than I am should do it. So give it up for Aaron Jorbing as well. <laughs> Who is a true ally? <laughs> okay, last thing, like quick round of what advice would you give to people starting out, underrepresented people starting out in the WordPress community or tech? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. So I, I, was, I, I was trying how many things can I fit into like one thing? <laughs> Like, okay, but I would say, just do you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, find something you're passionate about and you want to tell about and prepare the hell out of it. So practice, practice, practice. I uh, practice like a talk like a zillion times. I know my slides by heart and I go stand and do my talk because I own the material. And if you do that, it will all be okay. Um, it depends on like how everyone is, how everyone's personality is. So either connect with people directly, like go up to them, tell them, Hey, I love what you do or find another topic. Like you can talk to about the person. I'm not that person. <laughs> and the way I did it was by volunteering or like getting, a, like having a job to do. And this way I got to know more and more people over time, yes. which grew into my network that I have today. Um, and this is another way you can do it. Yeah. Um, I would say go do the thing no one wants to do and be great at it. Honestly, like build subject matter expertise on the stuff yes. that people are avoiding until it's cool. Um, I've noticed that time and time again. And honestly, for a while that was DEI work. Um, yes. No one wanted to touch it. And so you can kind of build some expertise and, and kind of grow from there. And you can also make a lot of mistakes because no one's looking. <laughs> can I add one more thing? You can. I think we all should accept the empowerment yes. that you receive. Yes. 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 So I think that we are all empowered by people coming up to you. You engage with them and everyone 
is probably pointing out, you, you have a great story to share, but what we do, we downsize that. Yes. So if we are open to accept that, we probably will live that. Thank you for reminding us that, because that's also another thing that we discussed, that we're terrible at taking compliments. <laughs> there was like an agreement, <laughs> more or less. Yeah, I would say do it, um, and do it within the, the boundaries that you set for yourself for your health, because sometimes also kind of persevering and trying to do something when everyone tells you that you cannot do it. It sucks because you should be able to do anything, but your health, you know, I think should come first. Like I always say that I want to retire as the CEO of Microsoft. I think that's a pretty hellish job, so I don't think I really want to do it. But I say to myself to pump myself up and say the sky is the limit. I think you're right there. There is something to be said for being a slow burn rather than a quick flame. Yeah. And that the slow burn is often what leads to a longer impact. Yes. You know? yes. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for saying yes to this conversation, <laughs> to this panel. It is the first time that uh, there is a panel like this at Work Camp Europe. There were other uh, work camps in the US. I think there was one at Work Camp Lisbon last week. But basically, let's keep having this conversation. They might be a bit uncomfortable sometimes, but we really need them, right? All right, so please, round of applause for... Team. I know I will not say lovely because that's also another thing they always tell us. Oh, you're lovely. Well, I'm a <laughs> questions. Yeah, we have time for maybe one or two. So if yes. you run fast, you can be them. <laughs> I told you we had four hours of content. You didn't. Yeah, yeah, it? go for it. Uh, first of all, thank you all so much for overcoming the fear and getting on stage. These are really important conversations to be having, so you're great, thanks. Um, what, there are a number of initiatives out there to get um, more women and non-binary folks speaking, but what else could we all be doing to make the WordPress community as a whole a more safer, welcoming and inclusive space? Anne, do you want to take this? Yeah, I've actually I've been thinking about this. Um, yeah. I think there's something to be said for uh, having resource groups similar to companies. Um, so having things, there's a, a group called Black Press, for example, um, that I think is awesome. And I think we should, we could have more of these kinds of groups um, where necessary conversation can happen amongst the group, but then also that can be brought out and advocated for on a larger scale. And similar to like make teams, you could have some level of, um, authority is not the right word, but there would be a, a way to be listened to or a pathway that is recognized in the project. Yes. Um, that I think could be really interesting. Of course, then you can run into, which we were talking about earlier, um, there needs to be some intersectionality. Um, yeah. You don't want a black queer person having to pick between which group they're gonna join for the day. Um, and so I think there's, there's a lot of work to be done, but in my mind, that's a place to start and to potentially yeah. experiment with. I know that there is some talk about uh, creating a... Um, well, there was yesterday at a uh, table, diversity, equity, inclusion. Yesterday or today, there was a blog post in one of the make uh, blogs. So I think things are moving. You can go first if you want. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read this because I'm nervous. But um, I don't actually have a question. I just want to say thank you for oh. putting yourself out there and being vulnerable. I also think we should probably acknowledge the men that are here today. Um, I think there's a lot of men that we, that we work with in the community that are incredibly supportive of yes. non-binary and, you know, the, sorry, I'm nervous, I'm not <laughs> saying my words properly, but the underrepresented groups, there's a lot of men in our community that support yes. those groups. And I just want to say thank you for being here and for listening. And um, whether you are battling to breathe or forgetting your words or, not feeling like you should be up there. I hope I speak for everyone to say that we as your audience are here to learn, we're here to listen, and we are not here to judge. So please keep being up there so we can be here and learn from you. Thank you. <laughs> So 
So yes, thank you very much. It was great listening to you. And yeah, I had today also my first talk. Woo! Or, no, it was... You did awesome. My, my first big talk. It, I had a lightning talk before in Portugal. And when I had my lightning talk, they told me, Viola, we are so sorry. No one can ask you questions. And my first thought was, oh my God, yay. I don't <laughs> yes. need to answer questions. I was so happy. So what I would suggest is also to say, let's choose the person who is going to speak. Because when I talk to some friends of mine, um, and I think they would be great speakers, but they say, yeah, Viola, I could prepare, but if they're coming bad questions. And yesterday, some friends of mine, they helped me to prepare some upcoming questions. But if you're on the stage, whew, I was so nervous afterwards. Yes. So I think we should let people choose if they want to yes. have the questions on stage or afterwards. Because Good I think point. then we can decide on our own. And yeah, on the stage, you're feeling sometimes not secure. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> something to that? Can I add? Is it my gun? Yeah. Um, I totally agree because I'm not a native English speaker and sometimes I get a question in soft Irish and then <laughs> I totally don't understand what the question is and that will get very very embarrassing so um, I say, and then I say come after, afterwards to me and then I will answer it but uh, having uh, to choose yeah. I think that's an excellent idea. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thanks. Emma is about to I'm kick us off. Emma is about to kick us off stage, I think. <laughs> okay, just one more thing. First of all, you guys are fabulous. Second of all, there is one other thing that we can do as a community to ensure that this stage looks more like us. And that is when you know someone who's fabulous, but they're not up there, tell them, encourage yes. them, say, get up there. And uh, let's just keep that applause going for our lovely panel.